Hi everyone, this is Nancy at Sipping and Painting Hamden in Denver. We're located at I-25 in Hamden in the beautiful city of Denver, Colorado. And uh, right now we're uh, closed for the pandemic, but we are offering these virtual classes. And I wanted to uh, share this one with you because it'll take your mind off of all your troubles. We're gonna be painting this. This is my interpretation or inspired painting. Um, inspired by Monet's garden at Giovanni. And everyone who paints something that is inspired by Monet's garden at Giovanni, uh, the paintings turn out a little bit different every time. So don't worry at all about if your painting, if your painting looks exactly like mine, makes no difference at all. So the first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you our brushes. I have a large, a medium, these are both flat tops, and a small, that's a round called round because if you look at it head on, it's a round ferrule. The ferrule's the metal part. I also have some water. I have a 16 by 20 canvas and I have some paints. And I'm gonna see how closely this will get to my canvas. All right. <clears throat> So first thing we're going to do is I'm going to spritz on some water. And the reason I do that is because in Denver, it's very dry. And so I want to make sure, I'm going to move my light a little bit. I want to make sure that you, um, that the, the painting is going to be easy, to, the paint's going to be easy to move around. Great. There's a leaf blower outside. Lovely. Lots of noise for you. Anyway, I'm just spritzing on some water. It's very dry in Denver and this moisturizes the canvas and it'll make my paint a little easier to move around. In wetter climates, climates, you may not have to do that, but in Denver, it's a good idea to do that so that your paints stay wet long enough to get the job done. All right, great. If you don't have a spritzer, you can just put water on your brush, that's okay. And then just start, start painting it that way, no problem. So, here we go. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to put yellow on my background. There's gonna be a lot of yellow on this painting. And so I'm going to put one side of my large brush in yellow. I'm gonna put one side of my large brush in white. Oh, and by the way, I'm using the primary colors today, yellow, red, blue, and then I have black and white. And I like to just start with the primary colors, uh, do the primary colors, and then um, I can mix any color I want with those colors. It's, it's uh, those are your basics. So why not make it easy? All right. So I'm gonna need to get some brighter light over here. Sorry about that. All right. Alrighty, so I'm just going to put on some yellow all over. This is called an underpainting. Anytime you put one color all over, or even, even more than one color, but it's not going to be your final look, that's called an underpainting. And it just kind of gives, it gives a background for your painting um, that other colors will sit upon and mix with. You'll see what I mean when we go get going. So I'm using part water. Pardon me, the, the canvas was moistened with water. I'm using part white and part yellow. And I'm not even remotely concerned with how neat this is. Not at all. If it's streaky, that's fine. Absolutely fine. All I want to do is I want to be sure to have that color behind most of it. Okay. All right. So that's the first thing we're going to do. Now, we have a choice. Let me show you the original. Well, it's not Monet's original. It's my original. We have a choice. We can 
We can paint the under, the lower part first if we want, or we can paint the background up here. It's, it really doesn't make any difference, but why don't I go ahead and I'm gonna start with the, the background behind the uh, bridge, okay? When you're painting with oil paints, it's pretty typical to start, with, pardon me, um, well, let me back up with acrylics. We're doing acrylics. Uh, it's, it's usually the case that you wanna start with the background in acrylics. When you do oils, it's totally different. When you do watercolors, it's totally different. And we'll have some of those classes coming up on our schedule as well. So watch our YouTube channel and you will see other classes as well. So you'll notice that on my palette, I don't have green. I have blue and yellow. And so, as you know, blue and yellow make green. So if I go to put a little from one side and a little from the other, I'm gonna get green. And what I love about mixing paints, and notice the dabbing I'm doing. I'm putting on these horizontal, pardon me, these vertical lines. These are vertical, that would be horizontal. Putting on vertical lines. And I didn't mix my paint really well. And actually, I love that. And the reason why I love that is that it provides texture if each blade doesn't look exactly like the other, okay? So I'm just putting on some vertical marks. Now, I don't know what kind of plant that is back there but it's something that grows up and down more than side to side. Now, uh, one thing that I like to do is I like to make the tops and sides and corners. So the tops and sides and corners a little darker than the center. I should tell you that last year I was very fortunate. My husband and I had planned our entire marriage. We've been married 35 years this year. And last fall, we uh, were celebrating our last kid graduating from college. And that was, oh my goodness, that was quite a, quite a wonderful feeling. And so to celebrate, we did what we had been dreaming of all of our married life. And we went to Paris. And we took a bus to Monet's garden. And it was everything that you think it is. It was amazing. It was so beautiful. Just, just stunning. And I was so, so overtaken by the garden. It was just spectacular. All right, so I've got these vertical lines. Notice I'm not looking for perfection. Perfection is the enemy of art. Um, it's interesting what I learned about, we saw a lot of Monet there. We went to all kinds of museums and then we went to his garden. And so I was very thirsty to learn about Monet. And what I learned was that when uh, when he painted, people didn't paint this sloppy. Like, and um, he, it was, you know, the realists were, like Rembrandt, were popular before him. And so when he came along as an impressionist, people were confused. They didn't know what to make of that. And so what he told them was, oh, they accused him of his work not being finished. So what he told them was, the way I paint is the way something looks to you after you look at it and then look away you're left with just the impression of it, which I thought was pretty, pretty fun. All right, so now I, I took that green that I used before, and then I just picked up a little more red on my brush. See that? It's not really, it's not really uh, any particular color, it's just a few colors, and I want to mix those in a bit. Looks a little pinky, but as I go, it's probably gonna blend in. Again, do I have any idea what those are? None, zero. But I am going to put that color, it's the green on my dirty brush, plus just a little bit of it picked up through red, and I'm gonna put that in some empty spaces. So people who are very particular, accountants and finance people and engineers, they're probably going crazy with this right about now because this is messy and it doesn't really look like anything. But what we're doing is we're creating this backdrop for this beautiful bridge that we're gonna put there. 
And so we want a variety of textures and shapes and colors. And that's exactly what we're getting right now. All right. So I'm going to switch to a medium brush for a while because, I, like I said, I want a variety of colors and textures and shapes. Okay, so I'm going to pick up my medium brush. I put it in water. And now I'm going to do the same thing. And this time I might go a little more yellow or a little more blue. You decide. But I want it to be a slightly different shade than I had before. Just slightly different. Same tapping and pulling down, same tapping and pulling down as I had before. But now, now I'm using my medium brush and a slightly different color. Just slightly different. Now, if we want to make it look even more texture, texturized, is that, is that it? Yeah. Uh, if I want to give it more texture, then I can come in little pocket areas and I can create little shapes with my dabs. In other words, I don't know what the heck that is. I have no idea. But it might be some kind of bush that one would see in a garden. Oh my goodness, that garden was so spectacular. You really uh, put it on your bucket list. If you've never been to Paris, France rather, put it on your bucket list. Do whatever it takes to someday go to France because I tell you, I was, the rest of my life, I'll be thinking, how is it? That's, that's what I was living for right there. Anyway, I don't really know what these plants are, but I'm, I'm playing around with it and I'm kind of enjoying it. All right, I'm going to put some down here now too, because you kind of get the idea. If you put them in clumps, it looks like, it looks like things are growing. We don't know what. Now, in Monet's garden, the bottom part is going to be water, but there's tons of plant life growing on the water. It's amazing. Water lilies and then other kinds of plants too. So I'm making these little clumps. All right. Um, okay, so I got all kinds of clump action going on. I don't really know what these are and I don't really care. I'm enjoying the tapping and I'm enjoying my glass of wine. We can't be thinking about France without some wine. Yum. Okay. All right. And then I am going to pick up a little more yellow. So far, if yours doesn't look like mine, awesome. That's what we want. As long as you're doing these little dabbing motions, you're picking up different colors on your dirty brush. As long as it's not black, you're, you're in business, you're doing great. I'm just using the blue, the green, and the yellow so far. And that little bit of red that I did before. Okay, all right, now what do I wanna do? Okay, so I'm going to create a little bit more texture down here, and maybe a little down here. Again, I don't know what these plants are. Maybe a little down here, a little here. No idea, no idea whatsoever. The way my eye is gonna know that this is water down here is that there's a bridge over it and my brain will think, oh, that's a bridge. There must be water down there. So now I'm gonna take my tiny brush. I put my medium brush in the water. I'm gonna take my tiny brush and any place where I have a back, oh, let me put a little bit of white in it. My yellow doesn't show up unless there's a little white in it. So I add a little bit of white to some yellow. And then any place that you have a background that's green, then put these long uh, stems, flowers, I don't know what those are. But yellow has to show up on something. There's a con there has to be some contrast behind it. So I'm going to take advantage of that background and uh, from each one and I'm going to put some little yellow spiky things. Again, do I know what these are? Oh goodness no. If you really wanted to paint like Monet's garden, get it, get the picture and then do it, do it just like it, the same kind of plants. But this is a fast painting and this is not a fussy painting. This is an impression of an impression. 
which is, it's still going to be beautiful. Just wait, you'll see. All right, so any place where you have something dark, just put some, uh, some things in front of it. And they could be long things. It doesn't have to be short things. And rinse off your brush in between every time. And then if you want, you can go into your red. And on top of some of those, you can even put dots. Maybe those are some flowers. Do we know what they are? Nope. Do we care? Nope. These are impressions of plants. They're not actual plants. So you put them wherever you want, okay? We're just getting a variety of strokes, a variety of brush sizes, and a variety of plant-like, plant-like shapes. So I'm not just going straight across, I'm zigzagging a little bit. I don't know what those are, but goodness, aren't they pretty? Okay. Now, if I were more of a perfectionist, I would go and research what kind of plants are growing in the water underneath that beautiful Japanese bridge in the Shivani. But, nope, I'm not going to. I'm just going to keep on painting. Another wonderful thing, if you ever do go to France, it was really, I, I didn't know that I would appreciate this, but goodness, I really did. We also went to the World War II Memorial uh, where the war was won, the, um, the beaches at Normandy. And I tell you, that was one of the most emotional things I have ever done. All right. So we got all kinds of funky things going on here. Uh, yeah, you can use your little brush and put in some yellow dots. You just want a variety of plant-like shapes. I put a little white in with my yellow. And I know, this is crazy. She's going crazy. But the impression when you go to that garden is just, it's teeming with life and it's peaceful. Even though there are a zillion tourists coming in and out, it was so lovely. I just can't even tell you how, how impressed I was with that place. Of all places we went to, the museums and the restaurants we went to in, in Paris, that was my favorite place. It was so peaceful and lovely and Oh man, I just loved it. Okay, so you can play with this all day long. It doesn't, it's really up to you how many different shapes you want to put in. You can put some really skinny lines in. Really skinny, that kind of breaks it up. The key is you want different sh shapes, different strokes, and everything's kind of on top of each other, just peacefully coexisting. Wouldn't it be nice if we all were like that? I'd like to see a world like that. Everyone just peacefully coexisting, not giving anyone, any other, anyone else any trouble. So I'm using the white on my tiny brush. I'm using yellow. Again, as long as you've used different brushes to create different strokes, but they're mostly going up and down, up and down. Start at the top, pull down so that you have little clumps, okay? That means things are growing up to the sky where they need to be, okay? All right. So now, let's see what I want to do now. I'm going to start to put in some... I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. See that? Looks like the magenta and the white, the reddish color in the white that makes pink. Looks like those are last. So I'm gonna keep going with green and then I'm gonna put on these pretty blue and white flowers and then the pink and white and then we'll do our bridge, okay? So I'm gonna keep going with green. Feels like we're doing this green forever, but you know what? That's really how it looked. And you can, if you flatten your brush a little bit, it'll go a little faster. 
Depends on how much time you have. Take your time if you want. I do clumps, I do 12 o'clock, one o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock, five o'clock like that. And that gives you a nice plant shape. What kind of plant? I don't know. All right, the water lilies are gonna be sitting on top of the water. And so those are flatter. So more of these. Change up your colors a bit. I use a little more yellow in that one. You can also use a little more green, a little more green, so it makes like a dark teal. It's still yellow, it's still green, but it's more, pardon me, it's still yellow and so blue, but it has more blue. So that makes more like a teal green. And just put them wherever you want. Okay, lots of those, I like those, they're fun to do. And they're taking up space pretty quick, and that's what I want. All right. All right, nice. So I'm also gonna keep going with this blue theme. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of white on my brush too. So I still have that dirty brush, and I picked up a little white and a little blue. And I, I want green but I want it to be a little blended with some blue. Well, that's definitely blue. All right, let's just put some blue ones in. And let's scrub in some blue water lines. Does she have a plan? I don't know, maybe. I just want you to have fun. I don't know about you, but this is, I'm painting this on in the second week of June. And it's uh, 2020, it has been so incredibly stressful. Uh, people are wearing their masks and no one's really coming out of their houses much. And ugh, it's awful, just awful. But you know what? You can just paint, just paint. So this is just some blue on my brush. I'm just making some water lines. Just making some water lines. And what I mean by that is just horizontal strokes in between the other stuff I have going on. I have a lot of vertical strokes that way, but this is the horizontal. It's just suggesting that there's some movement going right to left instead of up and down. Okay. And we can still do all kinds of things, but we're starting to get some movement in the flat way. Right. So I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to my brush. It still has some a little bit of that blue on there. And let's see, what do I want to do? Um, what kind of shapes have I not done yet? Oh. Hmm. That's a long shapes. Long and pointy, I'm painting with that sharp part of my knife, brush. It's like a knife, sharp part of my brush. I kind of chiseled, I chiseled my brush back and forth, back and forth. By the way, if I'm going too fast, just stop the video. Just stop it and start again. The whole idea of this painting, and the reason I love to paint it is because every time I paint it, it's totally different than the time before because all it is is whatever kind of flower I feel like painting that day. Whatever kind of flower shape I feel like painting, I throw it in there with some blue water lines. I put a bridge in front of it and you'd think I actually planned it, but I never do. And every time I paint it, something like this, it turns out different. You don't have to know how to paint anything. Just let your brush do all the work. All kinds of plant life. And now a lot of, uh, when I was in Giovanni, a lot of the pond, his pond there was water. But then off to the sides were these lush, lush plant-like areas. 
So this is more like off the side. My brush is dry, but it still has tiny bits of paint on it. So any yellow spots here, I am just kind of rubbing with a dry brush and smearing it just a tad, smearing it just a tad. Just smearing it just a tad. Just in any yellow spots that I look that look open and I feel like it. Just scrubbing it left to right horizontally just to take up any other yellow spots. And my brush is dry or very close to dry. It just has a little stain on it, if you will, just the tiniest amount of paint. Just enough to smear what's still a little wet. That's all I'm doing. But I want those horizontal, meaning left and right strokes, to suggest that whatever this is growing, it's growing on water. Okay? All right, now I'm gonna put my big brush in the water. Now I'm gonna make some more detailed lines. Okay? Little brush, my little brush. I'm gonna put it in white, and then I'm gonna put it in yellow, and then I'm gonna mix those together. And then, so a little bit of yellow there. I'm going to wiggle and pull, twist it backwards so it sharpens my small brush. And then I'm going to, I'm going to put in a few more little yellow lines in front of this, just wherever I can to add some texture on top of another color. Okay. I added a little more white to that so you could see it. Okay. And if you already have some yellow lines in front of that one, you can put some white lines in front of that. No one really knows what these are. I don't know what they are. I don't really care. Okay. Botanist care. I am not a botanist. All right, so I'm gonna mix a little bit of my white with a little bit of my blue. So I get a really pretty blue and white combination, a lighter blue. That's what I'm doing now. I'm just mixing my blue and white. Just mixing a little puddle of it. Not all of it, just a little. A little puddle of blue and white. See? A little puddle of blue and white. And then I'm going to put these little tiny dabs. Little tiny dabs. And I'm going to make three or four rows of them. And they're going to be kind of curved, you know, kind of arched around. Looks like a cluster of some kind of growth. I don't know what. Little tiny ones in there. And maybe there's some growing here. If you are from Texas, maybe they're bluebells. I think that's where they grow. Bluebells. I've never been to Texas, but I heard about them. I heard they're beautiful. I don't think bluebells grow in the water on a pond in Japanese pond in France, but who knows? I don't know. Something blue and white does. And I'm just gonna put them little, little dots, little clumps. Ooh, those are fun. All right, so we have so many colors in here. Holy cow, it's looking like Disney World. All right, in a good way. I'm not really a big fan of, of Disney World looks. It's a little too perfect and I never paint perfect, that's for sure, you can tell. I like to be messy and loose. All right, so we've got those little blue lines in there. All right, here's the fun part. Ready? You ready for the fun part? Okay, now I'm just gonna wipe off my brush. I'm going to mix some white into my red. And I'm gonna make a pretty pink, but I'm not gonna mix it well. I want it streaky. And the reason I want it streaky is because I'm going to put some clumps that are horizontal but short. And then make them wider as they come down. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? Hold that thought. I'm going to hold this, set that down for a second. Before I do that, I'm going to put a little red behind it, kind of frames them. Yeah, all right, that's fine. I just stuck those in after, but that's okay. I want to put a little more red, and then I would put the pink on top of it while it's wet, and that's gonna give it a little something to rest on. 
because the pink doesn't show up too well unless it's got something bold behind it. So little clumps of just red, just like we did before, little clumps of red. And then when I put on the pink and zigzag, or uh, move back and forth, you'll really be able to see them, they really pop. Okay. This looks crazy. This is a mess, but you know what? Once you stick the bridge on there, you can paint any kind of plant life under this bridge. And it doesn't really have to be Monet's garden. It could be any garden. Could be in your backyard. Could be botanical gardens. Could be in your imagination. It's your world. You do it your way. All right, so I've got some red there. I'm going to pick up that pink on my medium brush. And it's not blended well. There's some white in there, some pink. And then I'm going to scooch across in front of those red things. It gives gives them something to hold on to, okay? Scooch across, flip over your brush if you're running out of paint. And then pull them a little bit vertically, uh, pardon me, horizontally. All right, this is the craziest painting I ever did. Feeling a little pressure because I'm on a camera, but you know what? When I painted, my inspiration before, I felt no pressure. I was just not even thinking. I was thinking about my water bill or something. So just relax. Think about your water bill or something. Think about where you want to go on your next vacation. Think about something besides work, besides your family, besides the house chores you have. Um, kind of scattering these all over. I want to be regular about it. Oops, and I'm also going to make sure that I have the bottom. They're in clumps. They're in clumps, but they're more horizontal than vertical, but they're definitely a little piles, I guess I'll call them, like little piles of leaves. And then you can make some darker than others if you want. You can put on another little layer of red right on top of it if you want. Or white, you decide. This is your painting. The whole point of painting, the whole point of it is to relax. And it's very zen-like to move your brush side to side, up and down. It's just calming and wonderful. And it doesn't matter if you're making anything you know, you understand. Don't let your brain take over. Let your wrist, let your heart, let your emotion take over. Let the wine take over. Just relax, just relax, just relax. All right, There's all kinds of stuff going on in there. All kinds, it's crazy, but I'm enjoying it. That's all that matters. If you're enjoying yourself, that's all that matters. Nothing else matters. Nothing else matters. All right. You are the queen or the king of your universe. Remember I was going back and forth with my brush. Well, I have a little bit of red paint in there. I can go up and down and just put little, little, little drop dots somewhere. Something different. If you see a spot that looks boring, break it up. Why not? It's your world. It's your garden. You might have 50 different kinds of flowers in that garden. Right? Uh, yeah. Uh, anywhere where you want to break something up, you just, you just do it. No one is going to tell you not to. No one. Because this is your world. All right. So that's quite the jungle there. That's fun. That's fun, guys. All right. Put my brush in the water. I'm going to step back and I'm going to think about it. Only step back about 10 feet away from your paintings. And just think about them. Because you can see things from far away that you cannot see up close. Now, if this is too bright and too much contrast for you, you can always clean your brush really well, and anytime something's still wet, and you, you clean your brush and it's just moist but not dry, 
you can kind of smear it a bit. None of this is wet. None of this is wet. I'm feeling it. None of this is wet. This is all dry. That's how fast things dry in Colorado. Crazy fast. But as I go down, I might get some that are still a little wet. And when you do that, it just softens things a little bit. If you want them softer, you can do that. That's your call. You do you. But I just want to show you, it has to be a dry brush. Now I'm looking at my original inspiration. There's a whole lot more of this pink stuff in my original. Tons of it. Again, horizontal. There's just tons of it. They kind of, they kind of connect. Kind of, sort of. Kind of like a, not a patchwork, but they're visiting each other. They're visiting each other. Well, they get right up in there and they say hello. Whatever those are, they get in there and they say hello. All right. So, anything I'm missing? I'm gonna take my baby brush. There is this thing that I just love. I'm gonna figure out how to do it. Okay, there's a couple things I like in this original. I like these yellow lines, and I like those because those kind of look like tulips. So I sort of kind of had them here, but they didn't look sharp enough. So I'm wondering if I mix some blue, uh, some light blue, and then I put them near those. Oh, that's nice. I like that. Those red ones, red ones just kind of fall to the background. That's fun. Do I know what those are? No. Do I care? No. I'm just having a good time. And I hope you are too. Oh, those were good. I like those. All right. So I'm going to put more of those. They're just little piles of light blue. Some. What are they? I have no idea. No idea, but I like them. And I can have a little more white. Kind of make it layered. That's fun. You having fun yet? You having fun yet? The key is, it doesn't really matter what these shapes are, these flowers are. You're just getting in shapes that kind of sort of feel like some kind of flower you might have seen once. And you can put these little pokes of whatever they are. They're just stacked colors. I don't know what they are. And I'm doing them in layers on top of other colors that are dry. And that is fun. All right. Let's see what else. Yeah, here's some. Let's do some over here. Boop, 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 boop. And they kind of look like the colors are all mixing on my brush when I'm popping them on. And they kind of look, makes them look like orchids or something. Ooh, that is fun. That is fun. That's a good time. Painting is wonderful. I started painting when I turned 50. I am now 57, and when I was 52, I was just painting for fun at one of these paint and sit places in town. Actually, a bunch of them. I was on a bunch of them. And I was between jobs, and my husband said, you know, you love those painting places. And I had just told them that my favorite one was up for sale, and I was hoping somebody really good would buy it, somebody I liked because I loved that place. And kept thinking about how they tried different kinds of things that could become more popular. Was, anyway, my husband said, you know what, maybe this is a sign. Maybe you're supposed to buy this place. So never was in business before. I didn't know anything about wine, didn't know anything about painting. Sure the heck, didn't know anything about business. And I went, you know, I'm not getting any younger. It's time to swing out and do what I want to do instead of working for somebody else. And so, yeah, I jumped at it. And we've been here five years. The pandemic has definitely tested us, but we're hanging in here and we're going to reopen as soon as things are safe again. You notice I'm just, I'm just taking that blue, light blue paint and I get a little bit of white on my brush. It's the same little blue things. I don't know what they are, but they're pretty, so I'm going with it. 
And as I pop each one on, they're just like little stacks of whatever those are. Little stacks. Stacks of something. And they're resting, it looks right on top of those lily pads. All right, now I'm getting carried away and I could just put on little stacks of flowers all day long. And you could too. But I'm gonna save some of this blue paint and in a minute, we're gonna make a bridge. Woohoo! And then when we do the bridge, it's gonna, it's gonna tie together all of these crazy colors and shapes that we've been doing. These crazy impressionistic flower shapes. It's all gonna come together in just a few minutes. If you have any spots on there you don't like, you can always put a little green on your brush and just kind of scrub them out. Scrub out any yellow that you think is boring. Just put, take your baby brush, stick some green paint on there. And what I mean by scrubbing out is just put little pops of vertical color in there. You can do it wherever there's yellow. And this is something else sticking out of the water. Goodness knows we have no idea what that is and we don't care either. When you paint, you're on vacation every day. That's what I love about painting. I get to go far away. I get to leave all my troubles behind. I don't have to think about my relationship with my kids or my husband or my employees or my uh, the bank. Uh, I don't have to worry about anything. I just paint and relax. And I think about where I want to go on vacation next. Right now, in my head, I am on a beach. I don't know, maybe in, where could I be? Where do I want to be? Cancun? I don't know. Not Cancun. What about Puerto Vallarta? Ooh, that would be good. Yeah, let's go to Puerto Vallarta when we're in our head. Our dreams. In that painting world. Maybe they have some kind of garden like this in Puerto Vallarta. I don't know. Anyway, I could do this all day. I could do this. And if you won't, I probably will, but I'm not. All right, so this is all detail work with my small brush, and it's just taking up spaces and just taking in little lines that are reminiscent of some kind of foliage somewhere in the world. Okay? Let's call it done. All right, let's just do that. Oh, lots of quartz you see any in here you like. Oh man, that's fun too. Oh gosh, I can't stop. There's, I saw this movie, uh, uh, it was about six months ago. It was called Portrait of a Woman on Fire. What an upsetting name. It was a good movie, good movie. But in the movie, this woman was painting, a woman was painting another woman's portrait. And the woman who was being painted asked the woman, who was painting, how do you know when your painting is done? And she said, when you stop painting. And that has stuck with me all this time because you know, that's really what it is. You can take a painting, you can rework it every day of your life and it's never finished. Or you can say, I'm gonna paint for two hours and whatever is done in two hours, that's what I was meant to paint. And that's how this one's gonna be. All right, we have quite a crazy garden, wouldn't you say? All right, now, the way you know if something is dry is if it's still shiny, it's wet. Do you see shiny spots on here? Yes, there's plenty of shiny spots. There are two ways to dry a painting. You can, actually more than two, you can do this. This is my favorite way because Denver's dry, the air is dry, and so if I do this, for just a few minutes, my painting will also be dry. I like that. Or I could use a blow dryer. We have those here. I'm not a fan of it because I'm kind of lazy. I like to just pick it up. Um, I'm going to put some little horizontal line on some of these too. A little motion in here. This way too. I don't know what that is, but little highlight on those water lilies. Um, you could also blow dry a fan. We have fans in our studio. Actually, I think those work really well. Little little desk fans, those work great. The blow dryer is noisy, super noisy, and it 
creates heat. I'm not a big fan of blow dryer, but I know a lot of studios use it. I'm just putting, before I put pink and then I put little red lines and I'm just putting a little here and there, a little drop of white. That's just some sunlight kissing some of those flowers right on the head. A little kiss on the head. Because I looked at this one and I noticed it had those two. All right, so a little kiss on the head for some of these pink flowers. Probably not all of them, but whichever ones you get, those are the ones that nature wanted to have a little, a little other texture on it. Like I said, I could do this all day. I love painting. And I hope you love painting too. If you don't, keep painting, keep painting. Learn your style. My style is very messy. We have a bunch of different artists in our studio and they each have a totally different style. And it's so fun for me to watch them paint because they do things that I wouldn't have even thought of doing. Wouldn't have even thought of it. And then I look at them and I learn everything they're doing and then I come back and I do it my way. But you know what, that's how painting is. That's how you want it to be anyway. You want it to express your personality. It's not about the other people. It's not about Bob Ross and how he painted. It's not about Monet and how he painted. It's not about anyone except yourself. It's discovering who you are as an artist. Who are you? Do you know? Have you given yourself a chance to find out? Einstein said that genius is, what do you say, 90% inspiration and 10 uh, 90% perspiration and 10% inspiration? Absolutely. Now, I don't know about this light. I'm gonna have to get a different kind of light here. Hopefully you can see that okay. Not too bright, maybe if I pop it up like that. I just want the glare to go away a little bit. Well, what if I bounce it off the wall? Well, that's kind of nice too. There we go. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is whether it's dry or not, it's pretty close. It's close enough, okay? It's close enough. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my medium brush, I'm gonna clean it really well, really well. I mean, just stop and get more white paint. I never get enough white paint. And I am going to take a little of that light blue paint and I did not mix it well with my blue. I took a little blue and a little light blue. And here's your bravery test, okay? I want a windshield wiper motion. So pretend this is your windshield wiper and you're gonna, here's your bravery test. Start about a hand's width from the left. Keep your elbow in the center and then you're gonna swipe across. Okay, ready? I have an idea. Why don't we do this with a little brush first so we get the shape, okay? So I just have a little white on my brush, that's all I have, and I'm gonna get the top of the shape. That way I can go over it if it's not right. Do you see my windshield wiper? You see that? That's the top of my bridge. All right, get a little more white on your baby brush, and then here's another one. Let's come down here. Okay, because I'm gonna, my bridge is gonna be about that wide. So I'm gonna come way down here and I wanna mimic the top shape. If I don't exactly, who cares? It's an impressionistic painting. It doesn't have to be perfect. That's, that's what's fun about painting in this style, okay? All right, nice, I like that. Get a little more white paint on your brush and we're gonna have a crossbar in between. Woo, woo, it helps to say woo, 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 all right, got that? Nice, nice, all right, I'm having fun, are you? All right, so now I have that light blue on my brush, it's not mixed in real well, but that's cool, and I'm just going to make this a little thicker. My paint on my brush is streaky because the blue and the white are not mixed in very well. And that, my friends, is deliberate. 
because when you have white and blue not mixed in well, guess what you get? You get something that looks like old blue wood. Not really blue, but that's the impression. It looks blue because it's so great it looks blue. Isn't that crazy? Old wood. All right. And any place that looks too blue, I'm just going to whoop. Isn't that fun? I don't know where that bridge starts and stops, but guess what? It doesn't matter. Okay. Now I'm going to do, I'm going to chisel, chisel my brush so it's, I'm getting a sharper point. It's not just a blob anymore. I just want a little, a little more control. And here we're gonna, here's what we're going to do. I'm not going to have it straight down the middle. I want a little off center. I'm going to go one from the top to the bottom and the one right next to it. And there you go. Matching pair. I'm going to come over here and do another one. Whoop. Matching pair. Whoop. All right. Now, as far apart as those are, I want to put other ones that are about the same distance apart. Whoop. There you go. And so I have enough space over here to do another one. That is fun. That's fun. Now doesn't it look like flowers? Because it's got a bridge under there. Because my eye's thinking, huh, that weird blue thing must be a bridge because it's going over all those flowers in that swamp. All right, now all I have to do is some highlights and shadows on my bridge. Woohoo! And take my small brush, take my black paint. Oh, my black paint got thick. I need to add a little water to it. If your paints are drying out, add a few drops of water. A few drops of water. I'm, I need this to be like thick ink. Thick ink. Not chocolate pudding, thick ink. So I need to add water. I do not want big blobs. I'm going to keep stirring until it's thinner. Stir, stir, stir. Stir in that water. Yeah. All right, and then be able to chisel it back and forth on my brush. I'm twisting my brush on the plate, side of the plate, because I want it to be a little, I don't want any huge blobs. All right, now, there is light and shadow all over, bouncing around in all different directions of this painting. But I'm going to choose the same side and call it the shadow side. So underneath, we're going to call that the shadow side. So I have my tiny brush and real carefully, I'm going to put a black line underneath the whole thing. It's okay if you can't paint a straight line, we're not doing straight lines. All right. And if it's a little broken, that's okay too. All right. There's the shadow underneath the bridge. Now what I have to do the same thing. You know, it'd be smarter to start here. Oh yeah, I would have been smarter, man. All right, I'm gonna do it up on this one. And then in between those, in between those, because each one of these bars has a shadow underneath it. Ooh, oh, right there. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Perfection's the enemy of art. All right, a little more ink. Boop. All right. Now I'm going to take that same black. I'm going to come underneath this one. Boop. Try to use the same pressure. Sometimes I forget, and that's okay. That's why I like painting in a sluice style, because nobody cares. Nobody cares. Okay. And boop. Right there, and over to here. All right, there we go. Now what I'm going to do is I have to do the shadow side of each one of these crossbars, okay? So I'm going to do all the lefts or all the rights, but I don't want to do both, okay? So I'm going to choose all the lefts, just the left side, left side of each one. Just the less. This is going to make that three-dimensional looking because it has a shadow side 
and light some. Okay. I'm not crossing over because I'm imagining. Hmm, yeah, I don't know. I'm imagining that there's some kind of intersection there. I don't really know. It goes on top of what? So I'm stopping midway. Right here. Because we have some shadows on there, the bridge is starting to look a little more 3D, don't you think? All right, cool. Now I'm going to put my brush in the water. And I don't know if I have any white left. <laughs> I have to walk to the back of the room to get white. All right, let's see. Can I white at all? All right, I might just have to go to the back of the room. If you have any white at all, use your white and put that on. Oh, I got a little bit of something. Put that on the other side, on the other side of that post. Not the black side, the other side. Okay? That's your highlight side. That's your highlight side, okay? Mine's not white exactly, but it's light enough blue that it says to my eyes, hey, I got a little sun kissing me. All right, and I can keep now, just enough, I think I'm going to be able to put some highlights on the top of this. Highlights always go on the top during the day. Where do you think they go at night? Any guesses? Well, where are the lights coming from? So if it's moonlight, they'd come, the light would be coming from the top, and so you'd highlight the tops of things. But if it's a sunset, and the light's coming from the bottom, then you highlight the bottom of things. So you have to think in your head, where is my light coming from? Where is the sunlight coming from? All right. I'm almost done here. I've got somebody calling. They're going to be wanting to a Zoom link. All right. I think I'm done with my painting. So I'm going to go ahead and sign it right down in here. We have a class starting in less than an hour, another class. I'm gonna go help those people get my Zoom link. I just took my baby brush with the light color paint and I put my little initials in the corner. And that is my messy and fun version, inspired version of a Japanese garden. Could be Monet, could be your local botanic gardens, wherever it is, that's it. Thank you so much for joining me today. And it's been fun. Cheers to you. Cheers to your health and cheers to your painting. Bye-bye.